Welcome to the last session, last technical session on chess 2018. So this session will be on fault attacks, fault attacks two. So the first paper uh, is on new Bleichenbacher records, fault attacks on QDSA signature. The work is a joint work between Kyoto University and uh, NTD Labs. And the work will be presented by Akira Takahashi. Thank you for the introduction. So. I'm Akira Takahashi, uh, currently a master's student at Kyoto University in Japan. So today I'm going to present our recent results on Blachenberger's attack and also our new fault attacks on QDSA signature scheme. This is a joint work with Medit Tibsch and Masayuki Abe from NTT Secure Platform Laboratories. So here's the outline of today's talk. First, I'm going to introduce the problem we've addressed in this work. And then I'm going to present our three main contributions of the paper. So as a motivating example, let me briefly describe the Schnorr signature scheme, which is one of the simplest and most widely used digital signature scheme. So as everyone probably knows, the DSA and the ECDSA, those are the most notable variant of the Schnorr signature. As for the provable security, Schnorr signature is known to be secure in the random local model if the discrete log problem is hard. Also, another important feature of the Schnorr is that it relies on an ephemeral random value known as nonce. So let's have a look at this nonce in the Schnorr signature. So here, Alice is a signer holding a secret key D chosen from an integer mod n, where n is a large prime. And whenever Alice generates a new signature, she first uh, samples uh, this integer k from z over n z uh, uniformly and at random. And this uh, integer k is typically called nonce, and it usually satisfies the, this uh, congruence relation. And since S, S and H, those are the public information as a part of the signature, of course, Alice should never disclose her nouns to anyone else. Otherwise, it would be very easy to uh, recover the secret key. Also, Alice should never uh, use the same exact K more than once. So these are well-known facts. But what if this K is slightly biased? For example, as shown in this figure, and what if k's top bits are all set to zero? Or what if nonce k is partially leaked? Actually, uh, even in such cases, by collecting sufficiently many signatures, adversely could still bypass the discrete log problem and consequently steal the secret key by solving so-called hidden number problem. So we can see that nonce is a very sensitive part of the Schnorr signature, DSA and ECDSA as well. And it is very crucial to uh, evaluate the uh, risk of biased or leaked nonces. So in this context, our contribution can be summarized as follows. First, we optimize the statistical attack framework known as Bleichenberg's attack against uh, non-sedential like signatures. <clears throat> Second, as a separate contribution, we propose new fault attacks against uh, specific Schnorr like signatures called QDSA in order to obtain a few bits of nonces. And combining those two contributions together, we implemented a full secret key recovery attack against the Schnorr-like signatures, which was instantiated over 252-bit group using only two or three-bit nonce leaks. <clears throat> and actually, these targeted parameters have set new records in the implementation of the Blahenberg's attack. So here's the summary of the previous published records of attacks against nonces, including both Blahenberg's attack and the lattice attacks as well. So basically, uh, we solved this three-bit leak case and the much harder two-bit leak case. And to the best of our knowledge, uh, these targeted parameters have never been broken before. So now I'm going to present our first contribution, the optimization of Blahenberg's attack. So what is Blahenberg's nonce attack? It was originally already proposed 18 years ago by Daniel Blahenbacher, but it was only recently revisited by those two papers, the Mao Deo Tao uh, at the CHESS 2013 and Aranya Tao at the Asia Crete 2014. The main idea of the Blahenbass attack is to quantify the nonce bias by defining the so-called bias function, which is real valued between zero and one, and define the peak of it. Though I don't have much time to uh, formally describe this bias function, essentially, the bias function becomes zero if the nonce is uh, uniformly distributed. And if the nonce is biased, then this bias function becomes close to one. 
And essentially, the most important and costly phase of the black hand bias attack is so-called range reduction of integers h. And this phase is necessary to detect the bias peak correctly and efficiently. So what do we have to do exactly at the, during the range reduction? So we, fir we are first given S signatures, and we want to find the sufficiently many linear combinations of those H values. And these linear combinations have to satisfy two conditions. First, the resulting linear combination should be smaller than the certain threshold value. Second, the coefficients of the linear combination should be as sparse as possible. So those are the required conditions for the black hand attack to work correctly. Also, please note that the, this range reduction problem looks like a knapsack problem, but the main difference is that uh, in the range reduction problem, we have to find many linear combinations instead of a single nap exact knapsack solution. So the previous works I've mentioned before have tried to address uh, this range redu reduction problem in different ways, but unfortunately, uh, those, uh, their approaches were not very optimal especially if the nonce bias is, is quite small. Uh, for example, the, at the Dimaldo et al.'s work, uh, they used the BKZ lattice reduction algorithm, but with this approach, the co resulting coefficients of the linear combinations are not sparse enough if the nonce bias is small. Also, another important, another approach is the sort and difference conducted by Alain et al., but the sort and difference requires many inputs and consequently consumes a huge memory space. So we took different approach. So here we apply the schrepper shamirs knapsack algorithm. Actually, the use of schrepper shamir was already mentioned by Blachenbacher, but uh, interestingly, its merits have never been examined in the previous work. So what's good about schrepper shamir so, so first, the schrepper shamir is highly space efficient. And second, it can be uh, highly parallelizable by making use of Hargrave Gram Jules variant of Schreppel Shamir. So, our range re reduction algorithm was specifically inspired by this variant. So, here's the brief overview of how the Schreppel Shamir based range reduction works. So, we first split the input integer list into four separate lists and sort them. Second, uh, we search for the linear combinations of two whose top consecutive bits coincide with some certain fixed value and sort them, and push them into two separate lists. And finally, uh, we take the differences between those uh, linear combinations of two, and since now it's guaranteed that the top collision happened in the top bits, with good probability we can get uh, very small linear combinations for, uh, for each round. So that's the basic idea. So we analyzed this algorithm in detail, and they observed well-balanced time-space trade-offs. So here, as you can see, compared to the, compared to the previous approach, sort of difference, that our range reduction algorithm is much more space-efficient. But the drawback is that the time complexity got a bit worse. But in practice, the schreppel shamir based range reduction still uh, terminate within a reasonable time frame by making use of large-scale parallelization technique, which I'm going to revisit in the implementation section. <clears throat> so now I will go over our second contribution, the fault attacks on QDSA signature scheme. The QDSA signature, which stands for the Quotient Digital Signature Algorithm, is a recent high-speed variant of Schnorr signature proposed by Renes and Smith at EasyCrypt last year. The important feature of the QDSA is that it can be instantiated with CURB25519 Montgomery CURB. So this means that the signature generation algorithm can benefit from highly efficient Montgomery's ladder, Montgomery's ladder based scalar multiplication in which Y coordinate is not used at all. Also, please note that in QDSA, the nonce K is uh, deterministically generated. <coughs> Here, our took idea is quite simple. So we basically exploit this group structure of CARB25519, which, as you can see, include uh, non-prime non and low-order points. So by injecting an appropriate fault to the base po point of the CARB25519, we can perturb it to non-prime or low-order points. And using this uh, faulty base point as an input to the ladder function, by looking at the resulting faulty output, 
for the output, uh, we can obtain the partial information of the secret scalar K, which is used as non conditional QDSA signature. <coughs> so here I give the, our fundamental observation on why our attack works against the QDSA signature. So first, if we attack the EC Schnorr or EC DSA, uh, since they use y, y coordinate as well, if we perturb the point, the resulting point is not likely on the original curve anymore. That's why our fault attacks wouldn't make sense against such schemes. On the other hand, since QDSA makes use of X only arithmetic and therefore it does not involve Y coordinate, the perturb point, the P tilde, is necessarily on the curve itself or its twist. So that's why, even after injecting a fault, uh, we can still confidently make use of the structure of the underlying original curve. So following this observation, we proposed uh, two types of fault attacks on curve 2519. The first one is random same permanent fault against the uh, program memory. So using this fault attack, we can obtain the three least significant bits of the nonce. The second one is uh, instruction skipping fault against the base point initialization. So this fault attacks only reveals two LSP of the nonce. It is much easier to achieve in practice. And we verify that this attack indeed works against the QDSA using the chip whisper light against the AVR microcontroller. The countermeasure is quite simple, just multiplying the nonces by a least common multiple of the curve, curve cofactor and the twist cofactor. And this technique is, co technique is commonly known as a cofactor killing or clamping. So especially for curve 2519's case, we can just multiply the nonce k by the least common multiple eight. So this clamping technique completely throws our proposed fault attacks. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to present our main result, the implementation of the nonce attack against Shino like signature. So here's our main result. So we attacked uh, QDSA uh, using only two bit leaks. And the first as an input, we simulated two to the 40, 40 QDSA signatures out of which we used uh, only two to the 26 instances uh, having uh, smaller H values. And we fed them into Blyhenberg's attack. And we highly parallelized the implementation. So in this experiment, we used uh, 256 threads in total. And after the first trial of the Blyhenberg's attack, we successfully recovered the top bits of the secret key. Also, as ex expected, the memory consumption was uh, quite modest. So in this experiment, we only uh, used uh, 15 gigabytes of memory. Also, the CPU time was rather long. The, thanks to the large-scale parallelization, the actual experiment finished only after 16 days. <coughs> also, once we know the top bits of the secret key, <coughs> the, we can recover the remaining bits of the secret key by iteratively applying Blahenbach's attack. And this procedure took only less than six hours. Also, please note that uh, our estimation shows that the certain difference, the previous approach, would require much more signatures, which would be equivalent to the two terabytes of memory. So I would say that this attack would have been much more difficult to achieve in practice uh, using the previous range reduction algorithm. Also, we attacked a bit easier case the using three bit non leaks. So here, of course, the walk clock time was much shorter than the previous one. And since the CPU time was uh, less than uh, 10 days, also the memory consumption was uh, less than three gigabytes, we can say that the Blyhenberg's attack would be even feasible using a small laptop. Also, it turned out that attacking with sort and difference is possible. And of course, as expected, uh, that sort and difference range reduction was much faster than the Shirepe Shamir based one. <coughs> However, the memory consumption was uh, over 100 gigabytes and uh, it required billions of signatures which would not fit in the commonly used laptop. So let's conclude. So in the first contribution, we optimized Blahenberg's attack and uh, successfully overcame the memory barrier of previous approach by applying knapsack algorithm. 
In the second contribution, we propose new for the tax on QDSA signature over uh, instantiated over CAB 25519. And here we discovered yet another situation where adversely could learn the partial information of nonces. Also, the important lesson here is that the cofactor killing is a crucial countermeasure when using X-only arithmetic of Montgomery curve. And finally, we implemented a nonce attack and presented the first large-scale polarization of the Blahenberg's attack and successfully set the new records of nonce attack. And of course, our parallel implementation of the Blahenberg's attack is publicly available on GitHub page, so please check it out. Thank you very much. So we have some time for questions, so. Hi, thank you for the nice talk. Uh, so I have a question, what kind of fault model you have assumed in this case? Can you explain the fault model? So in the first fault model, uh, I mean, the, the fault that makes it possible to review the, the three SB. So we basically like, assume that the optical fault in order to induce the bit flip. And then the second model, uh, we basically use the clock glitch. OK, so clock glitch resulted in single bit flip only? Sorry? The clock glitch resulted in bit flips only? Single no, no. Uh, the clock glitch was uh, just used to like, like skip the one instruction to set the x coordinate of the base point oh i see i see okay thank you so are there any qu other questions so i have one question so like you mentioned about the montgomery ladder being implemented uh, using x coordinates so what if i also have projective coordinates to implement like with will, will that act still work so like if you ju just use if I have x and z for example as coordinates X ah, so we basically assume the XZ in this okay. experiment. So oh. that's it, what exactly it works. Okay. So uh, are there any questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker. Thank you.